Through the magic of Photoshop and Topaz Studio 2, we're going to take this photograph and turn it into this piece of digital art. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I'll be using the new landscape mixer in Photoshop to transform this image and then I'll send that into Topaz Studio 2 and we'll turn it into a piece of digital art. Let's get started. I'm using the latest version of uh, Photoshop. This is 23.0 and in it you will find the new landscape mixer. To launch the landscape mixer, come up to filter and click on neural filters. And inside of neural filters, you'll find the landscape mixer right here. Just uh, check it on or toggle it on. And what you'll find is a bunch of different presets. And you can also load custom presets as well. But we're just going to work with these presets here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click some presets just to see what this thing does. So let me click on this preset. Takes it a while. Now, it does process it on your device on this particular filter. It doesn't do it up in the cloud. But it takes a few seconds to do it because it's using uh, artificial intelligence. But it's going to add this snow effect to my scene. Isn't that really cool? Now, you might be thinking, wow, that's really cool. But would I really want to alter my photograph that much? Because it does change your photograph. You know, it's taking this flower scene and putting snow. And now you don't see the flowers. Or if I click on, say, this particular preset here, let's see what it does with this one. And you may say, well, I don't know if I necessarily want to change my photograph to look like this, but I thought I love to create digital art and I love to use Topaz Studio 2. So why don't I just really alter an image and then run that into Topaz Studio 2 and run some artistic effects on it and see what I can come up with. And that's how this episode came to be. Let's try another one. And this is actually the one I chose for this tutorial. But think about this. You can take your images or you can get some stock images, alter them, really transform them. Because look how this transforms. It changes from this image into this image. Isn't that cool? It really changes the total flavor. And I thought... Wouldn't this make a great digital painting? Now, already it has a painterly quality to it. And I thought, I'm going to take this and run this into Topaz Studio 2 and see what I can get. Now, you can do different things here, like adjust the strength. Like you can cut the strength back in here and it'll alter the effect a little bit. Let's see what we get if I pull the strength back. Okay, now you see a little bit of flower showing through. But you can play with these sliders. But I'm going to leave it up full. But then you can do other things like change this thing to like a sunset image. Let's see what happens if I pull this over. Let's take it the whole way over just to see what it does. I've never done this before, but let's take a look. Wow, that's pretty neat. Can we turn it into a winter sunset? Let's find out. I'm going to drag this winter slider the whole way over to the right, and let's see what it does here. Will it transfer it into a winter sunset? Uh, yes, it will. I think that is really cool. But for today, I'm going to use the initial preset. So I'm going to shut winter off, and I'll shut sunset off, and we'll be back to the original preset, which I thought gave us a nice sunny summer day look. And we'll send that into Topaz Studio 2 and turn it into a piece of digital digital art. Now all we need to do is send this back to Photoshop. So make sure your output is set for new layer and click OK. And we'll be in Photoshop here in a second with a new layer. So here's our original image. And here's our landscape mixer image. Quite a difference, wouldn't you say? But the landscape mixer, if you like to create digital art, I think you're going to love this new landscape mixer. So you can take and alter your images in all kind of different ways. You want to make them sunsets, winter scenes, summer scenes, change the flavor of the image altogether. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and send this into Topaz Studio 2. I'm just going to do a Commander Control J to duplicate the background layer. Come up to Filter and we'll launch Topaz Studio 2 and we shall get started. By the way, all the adjustments I make, I'll leave in the description below this video, as well as a link to download this image if you want to try this out for yourself and work along with me. It's a lot of fun, and it's a great way of learning that way. So let's go ahead and add a filter. I'm going to go, what filter do you think I'm going to add? If you thought, uh, Dave, you're going to add that impression filter again, uh, you would be right. So let's go ahead and click impression. And already, in a second, we have a pretty nice looking painterly type image. 
When I'm using this impression filter, I like to start out with strokes and click around the different strokes and see what kind of effects I get. And after clicking around, I ended up with this type 08, more of a sketchy type stroke. So I just clicked on it and now right now it doesn't look very good, but all you need to do is slide down to the texture section, open it up. And instead of a solid background, click on original and you'll see you don't see that background white showing through and it looks a lot better now let me go back up to the top here and we'll get editing i didn't make a whole lot of adjustments i left the number of strokes to medium and then what did i do paint opacity i changed it from 50 up to like 59 just so you could see those strokes a little more defined and the other two adjustments i made here was stroke width and length now the stroke width was 26 and what I do is just drag these sliders and see what kind of effect I get. And I stop at the point where it looks pleasing to my eye. It's just that simple. On the stroke length, uh, I think I shortened it up a little bit. Let me go real short. As you can see, it takes on different effects. But what's the right spot to stop at? Really, the spot that you think looks the best is really the way to do it. And I ended up at like a 0.04. And that's all I did in this initial adjustment here. As far as these other adjustments like spill and smudge and coverage and painting progress, I tried them and they weren't really helping my image. I didn't feel like it was moving in the right direction, so I just left them alone. So here's my tip. You don't have to use every slider. You don't need to adjust everything. But try things, experiment, and just if it's not helping, don't use it. Here's another little tip. After adjusting a slider and you decide you don't want to use it, just double click on the name of the slider and that will reset it back to its default position. This is a nice soft looking image and I think I want to add just a little bit of texture to it. So if we come down in this impression filter down to texture and you'll notice we have a slider called texture strength and we have all these different textures in here. Now I found a texture in here and I believe it was this guy right here after some experimentation concrete painted. And let me zoom in so you can really see the effect. Right now you don't see an effect but I took the strength and started to pull up the strength. And can you see that little bit of texture coming in there? It gives the image a look like it was painted on a nice textured type paper or possibly sketched on a paper. Along with strength, we have size. So you can play around with the texture size and find a size that works for your image. And I think that looks really good right there. But I think the texture really adds. The last thing I want to do is work on the color a little bit. Now you can work on the color right inside of the impression filter. It has a basic HSL color adjustment in here. I generally don't use that adjustment. I generally come up to add filter and find the HSL color tuning adjustment click on it because it has its own layer mask in case I want to mask things out a little bit differently but you could work right inside the impression filter if you wanted to but I generally don't I'll start off by taking the overall saturation see this block is is uh, selected right here that's for the overall color so I'm just going to take the saturation and start to fill it back a little bit and I think I use like a minus 16 just to take off a little bit of saturation that's minus 15 let's try minus 14 I'm feeling that right now. And then I went to yellow and I altered the hue of the yellow. I changed the yellow hue a little bit, warmed it up a little bit, and I went to like a minus 23. But you see how things are warming up? But I stopped at minus 23. And then I went to the green hue. So just click on green. And then I took that hue and made it a little more on the green side by dragging the hue slider to the right. And I stopped at like point. 28. Now I'm playing those warm yellow tones off of the green tones, which I think looks really good. And lastly, I thought the blue was a little weak in the sky, so I clicked on the blue swatch here and just took the blue saturation and started to build it up. So I took it up to a positive 46 is where I ended up at. Let me toggle this HSL color tuning layer off. So here's the before. And here's the after. But I think that really helps it. Now, I really like the color. Now, I think we're done at this point. If you feel you want to do other images with this same effect down the road sometime, you could come up here where it says save look and click this and give it a name. Like I'm going to call this summer, summer scene. And uh, I'm going to click OK. And that'll be saved out as a look. So I could use it uh, as a look next time. And to open up looks, all you need to do is... 
come over here to where it says add look click on that and it'll bring up all your different looks I'm done so I'm going to come over and click accept and that'll send us right back into Photoshop and now we can see here is the before and here is the after and then the overall before if I option or I'll click the background there we started out with this and can you believe we ended up with this pretty phenomenal in my opinion there's just a couple things that bug me and that is this right here this little whatever you want to call it I think it was a cloud it looks like a hill back there a mountain I don't like it and there's a little bit of a tree over here so I'm just going to get my spot healing tool and that's J is the shortcut for that and I'm just going to paint over this and get rid of it just like so and then I'm going to come over and just paint over this. That spot healing tool works so well. And then there's just one other thing I don't like, and that's this dock here. It just doesn't look quite natural to me, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to use the spot healing tool for that as well. And I'm just going to paint over this area right in here and see what kind of a job the spot healing tool can do here. And yeah, I think it does a really good job. Yeah, I just, I just didn't like that. I thought it looked a little bit unnatural. It's being stubborn here I'll hit it a couple times and there that looks better now I'm satisfied well there it is everyone we had a dramatic transformation today we started out with this image which is a really nice image to begin with and then we end up with this well I hope you give this one a try don't forget I'll leave the link so you can download this uh, the original image in the description below and I'll also leave all the adjustment settings for Topaz Studio 2 there as well but give it a try and let me know what you think I'd really love to hear from you if you enjoyed today's tutorial please give it a like and share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe click that bell notification icon then every time I upload a new tutorial you'll be notified about it I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.